So, Enoa, you've been nominated for the Writers Guild Best Pair of the Year with Barbershop Chronicles. Yeah, I was, I was also nominated for, for the, Af well, shortlisted for the Alfred Fagan. And I won a Human Rights Award for an Evening to an Immigrant, which has meant more to me than anything. So it's been a really good year. It's been, yeah, it's been good. I came to see Barbershop Chronicles twice. I came last, well, a couple of months ago, but it was first in London, and I came again this week. And it's been amazing both times. Um, and I was really interested in the portrayal of, you know, black masculinity in this play. And I just kind of wanted to know what your thought process was when you were writing it, because it's so central, I guess, to the play. I, w I was born a man. It was only when I came to England that I became a black man. And I'm still a Nigerian, so I'm still an African man. I'm not a black British man. When I first came here, when I was 12 years old, lots of the Caribbean kids and the black kids I schooled with told me to stop acting white. And I did not know what that meant because I thought I just came from Africa. I'm the darkest person in this class. Max and is so thick. Sometimes in an attempt to sound British, I can't even understand myself because it just comes out coagulated and ugly. And it took me till, um, so I went to Dublin for three years and came back that I realized what they meant. When I got to Dublin, I was the only black boy in that entire school. And I'd step into the classrooms, I'd walk down the hallways and people would either yell things at me or expect um, as little from me as possible. Which meant that I began to develop a thick skin, began to express, expect to be antagonized. Therefore, I'd begin conversations with my backup slightly aggressively, leaning into the, the potential threat. And when I arrived here from Nigeria, I had none of those airs. I just ran around, you know, like, talking to teachers and expecting doors to open because in Africa and Nigeria, all the doors, all of those doors opened for me. So it was when, it, when I came back, when I returned here as an adult that I realized how racism invites an aggressiveness to black men, which is why sometimes we do walk around aggressively or angrily. I think lots of black British men fight for spaces where they can just be themselves, and barbershops are those spaces. This play, The Barbershop Chronicles, has been amazing, but it's not been the only thing you've done this year. I remember I went to see uh, An Evening with an Immigrant, mm. uh, which was fantastic. It was like just you on a stage, one man show. So you took that on tour around the country, right? You did that yeah. in a few places. I guess in London, you have this feeling that there are quite a few immigrants, yeah. that multiculturalism is really kind of accepted and, and, and seen as being part of what London's about. Mm. So when you took this play outside, what was the reception like? Um, I'll say this, people are pissed. They just did not know the things that I was telling them about the immigration policies, how it was affecting various members of the communities. And for me, it was as sort of life affirming and like immigrant affirming to find that there were various pockets of, of Britain who, just, who didn't just vote for my kind to be ostracized from the country or most of the decisions that they had made were because they were ill-informed. What do people not really know about? Um, firstly, there's this perception that immigrants just sail into this country and it's easy. And, you know, the Home Office or the government just gives them money, pays for them to eat, and they just, they just give them council houses. So I knocked that on the head by saying, <laughs> clearly not. Secondly, there's this perception that immigrants are poor, broken-ass people who have nothing to contribute to society and explain how I was a middle-class Nigerian family. My parents were sending us to boarding school and things got difficult and we had to leave. So I also knocked that on the head. And thirdly, I explained just, this, just the, the legal loopholes and how long it takes for immigrant um, cases, immigration cases to be sorted out. So a lot of people thought it only happened in a couple of six months and I explained how mine took 14 years and I'm just average, you know, and then they explain about the staggering costs just to fill in the form and send it to the Home Office cost £993 and to apply for indefinite leave to remain cost £2,297. Just explaining, like, no one makes this journey, no one leaves their country of, of birth flippantly. And there were people just angry. They just did not know this, completely shocked. Audiences just gasping out loud, looking at each other like, is this real? And I always say, just look online, don't take any, you know. All, this, is, this is just the stats, these are just the facts. Do you feel angry? Um, nah. No? No. <laughs> How do you not feel angry then? If um, you're writing all of this stuff and you know this, and you've been through this yourself, you've taken 14 years, you know, to get your paper sorted out, how do you not feel angry? Anger can be a really constructive battery. But if I feel angry, if I feel away, 
about something. I just capture it in verse or something, and, and that is my way of processing things. And I always just try to make it art. And anger expels that for me, expels that, that um, the energy of that. How long is the play going on for? What do you have planned for when it's over? Um, the you... plays run until the 9th of January, and then it goes to Australia and New Zealand. Australia, that's amazing. Are you going to get to go to Australia then? And no, no I'd you love don't get to, to go. Well, I want to, but because of my immigration status, my 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 um, status expired um, on the third of November. So I'm just waiting for the Home Office to decide what to do with me. I can't leave the country, so I can't travel with the play. So I'm just here until whatever happens happens. So your play is going to Australia, and you might not be able to go because of your immigration status. Yeah. That seems, that seems ridiculous. <laughs> it does, right? I had a meeting at the House of Parliament two days ago. No, yesterday. And, and there are all these like, incredible things happening. People like Hugh Jackman came to see the play. I'm a huge Wolverine fan. I was like, oh, you know, and then Andrew Garfield. So Spider-Man, um, Wolverine, and Idris Elba. You know, all of these heroes of mine. And I'm just thinking, oh, anyway. And here I am fighting for, to be to stay to you know to remain a part of this country. It's just it's just it's just ridiculous. But it's it's what life um, has dealt myself and my family. And like yeah, if if I was angry, I would not be able to wake up in the morning. I would be able to get out of bed. And and um, so I just laugh and think about how I can make art of it. Yeah, that's that's always my get out clause.